Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we are on the beautiful Mediterranean island of Cyprus. Paphos is a city on the southwest coast of the island and today we're going to take you on an ultimate tour of the absolute best things to do in and around this amazing destination. In the first part of this two video series we'll explore some local historical landmarks, ruins and hidden gems. We'll show you the ancient harbour, climb to the top of the majestic Pathos Castle, a medieval fortress that offers breathtaking views of the coastline, along with an archaeological site of Roman ruins and some of the best mosaics in the world. Along the way we'll pass by Pathos Lighthouse and after that we'll drive to a sleepy town high in the mountain, visit a local winery and museum and get the opportunity to do some local amazing wine tasting. Later we'll check out the ghost of the Edro 3 which is a famous shipwreck along the coast of Paphos. Join us as we uncover the hidden gems and must visit attractions that will make your visit to Paphos truly magical. Don't miss out on the best secrets and experience that Paphos has to offer. We're going to share them all with you right now in this video. Harbour is one of the next things to do on your things to do in Cyprus list. So the harbour dates back to the 3rd century BC. It's a congregation or meeting place for a lot of locals and tourists alike during the day and at night. There's a wide range of bars and restaurants. So it looks like the nearer the harbour the more expensive the food is but it's a great view. There's people out doing water sports today. There's a beach further around on the east side where you can... Oh, wait. <laughs> There's a beach round at the east side where you can hire some sunbeds and have a swim if you want to get in that freezing cold water. Nice place to come and walk along the promenade. There's an archaeological site with some mosaics I believe and there's a castle over there. Maybe we should go and check the castle out and the archaeological site also and see what else is around. And have a wonder. So I came down here yesterday just for a quick look on our way past. It seems a lot busier today, maybe because it's the weekend. All along the promenade is people selling boat trips, snorkeling trips, turtle watching trips. Uh, don't know how expensive they are, but it's worth a look if that's something you want to do. Um, also, a little bit further around near the castle, there's a lot more uh, restaurants by the sea. Mainly seafood restaurants, looks really nice, really fresh. Price is not too bad either. And a little bit nicer than the harbour itself. Super, super duper windy today. Uh, behind us is Paphos Castle, it's just at the other end of the harbour, but Lucy doesn't want to go in because she wants to eat instead. Actually, we decided to come back today and go inside the castle. It's a nice day, we've got a few hours to spare. So we said we weren't going to come in last time, but we thought we'd better come in and show you what it's like inside. was very expensive to get in there. They loved it but I think it was overpriced. Two basically. euros fifty or two pound. Great views over the harbour and over Paphos town and the surrounding areas. Also a view over the sea. Yeah, well worth it. Very well restored considering it's been demolished a few times over the years by earthquakes and wars and all kinds of things but yeah. You really enjoyed it. Glad we came back. Well there something we go. you must all but back something you must do on your visit to Paphos. 
quick ice cream overlooking okay. the sea. My favorite ice cream of all time, a white magnum. Mm. First one in four years. Nice little stroll along the harbour front. There's plenty of bars and restaurants and shops selling. And it's so everything. much nicer. We came, I think yesterday we came and it was just gloomy and not many people around, a little rainy and the sea was rough. But today, totally different place. Very yeah. nice place to have a wander around. Yeah, loads of bars, loads of restaurants, loads of them have got like happy hour on different times during the day. Very full, very busy. It's nice in the sunshine, not bad at all. Yes, we are at the one of the archaeological sites, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and there are supposed to be some beautiful mosaics that have been preserved and left over from the ancient Romans and Greeks. Some of the best mosaics in the world. Uh, let's go inside and have a look. Entry is four euros fifty, which about about four pounds or six dollars maybe. <laughs> Inside the archaeological complex are a massive compound of Roman ruins, Roman villas, bathhouses, some fantastically beautiful mosaics, um, a lot of them out in the open, some Roman columns also. The best mosaics are situated in indoor buildings to protect from the sun and the element. Um, but it's well worth coming and having a look if the mosaics are your thing or the ruins are your thing. Inside the complex is also Paphos Lighthouse. They're restoring the lighthouse because it's in the same UNESCO World Heritage Site so and it offers some fantastic views over Paphos and the harbour and the surrounding areas. So also inside the compound is the Roman amphitheatre, it's called the Odeon, um, built around 200 AD or the 2nd century AD. Um, still in use today actually for concerts. Overall, it's a beautiful place to visit. Entrance fee, as we said, is four euros fifty, and they close, I believe, at four thirty p.m. Next stop on our things to do in Cyprus, we are a little outside of Paphos town and we've come to see a shipwreck. So this is the Edro III, it was a cargo ship on its way from Limassol to Rhodes when in 2011 it ran aground in heavy seas. There were nine crew members on board at the time, all of them were airlifted to safety and in the couple of years after it the, all the fuel was removed so it's safe. So shit weighs 2,500 tonnes, I've tried a few times to salvage it. Yeah, all the attempts have been unsuccessful and as of now they are just leaving it where it is. All the fuel's been drained off it so it's safe, but it's a no entry ship, although Lee wants to go and look round it. There's a rope, it's sitting on the seabed at 12 degree angle. There's a rope from the sea to the ship, easily climbable, I think, and I'd love to go inside now and explore. Do that tomorrow. Lucy says I'm not allowed and I'm not fit enough to climb up the road, but I definitely am. Um, <laughs> but yeah, really interesting place to see. Some great Instagram pictures. We'll leave a link in the description box below to the location. Well worth a little trip out, as I say, five minutes away from Coral Bay. Which is our next stop. We've just arrived at Coral Bay Beach.
quick visit to Coral Bay Beach. Um, a little paddle in the sea for me it is. Um, not what I expected at all. It's an okay beach. I wouldn't describe it as a white sandy beach. It's sandy. It's apparently one of the best beaches in Cyprus. It's about 600 meters of sand. It's very powdery. When it's probably not as windy as it is today, it's probably very calm to swim in and shallow for a paddle. There's places to buy some snacks, there's some showers, there's some toilets. There's one place to buy some snacks and some very smelly toilets. Um, come prepared, bring your own beer, I guess. Looks very expensive. Six euros for a beer. Eight euros for a cocktail, which seems really expensive. The toilets are terrible. Uh, beach doesn't look so good. There's some changing rooms. I guess if you go to the further end of the beach away from the, the snack bar, uh, it's a little bit quieter and you can, like Lucy said, you throw your towel down and spend some time here. But best beach in Cyprus, let's go and see some more and find out. Next stop on our things to do in Cyprus, we've hired a car, we are travelling upwards into the mountains. We're going to a village, a local village called Kathitkas. Yeah, it's um, about 655 metres above sea level and these roads are very windy coming up here. I'm glad I'm not driving. And it's around 20 kilometers north of Pathos. I suppose we're a really pretty little local village, well known for their great production. Wine, wine. <laughs> so we might find some local wine as well. Let's go on this mountainous windy road and see if we can make it there. is really pretty it's all stone all the roads are houses are all matching beautiful old style loads of little cats wandering around there's a church there's a couple of museums that don't look like they're open today and they make wine here it's grape harvest is between september and october and then in some of the wineries you can see the wine being made as well had a 15 minute walk around Kathitkas, uh, very nice, there's a couple of local bars and taverns, uh, very windy up here, um, a beautiful church although it's locked, unable to go in right now, so it looks nice inside, appeared through the window, beautiful stone buildings, very sleepy town, there's a couple of stores, a few guys back there, um, done the same route we've done on some bicycles, strange individuals. Strange individuals indeed. Talking of strange individuals. <laughs> Hi Lucy. Nice little wander around the village. It's just starting to spot with rain, but we've seen a sign for a winery and wine museum, so I think we're gonna head down that. Yeah. It's taken about 35 minutes to get from Paphos up the mountain road to Kathikus. Just heading to the winery and came across some grape fields. Grape fields? Not sure they're called grape fields, but grape growing areas. Grape fields.
down to the Sterner Winery, about 1.5 kilometres, uh, you were right Lucy, from um, <laughs> Cathedral town, village, um, just stumbled across this winery and come inside just on the off chance. Very welcoming lady, um, so let you look around, we're now in the cellar, surrounded by hundreds of thousands of bottles of wine in like a cave. Natural cellar. Uh, natural cellar, it's really cool in here actually, but stuffy. But, um, there's also a museum, we're going to look around the museum, and then there's optional, and it is optional, it's wine tasting, and it's five euros for wine tasting with olives and bread and dips I believe. So we're going to look at the museum now and we'll get back to you and see if we can find a little taste of wine. wine tasting so it's five euros per person and you get three wines a dessert wine and a wine spirit and you get some olives some bread and some olive oil I've never done wine tasting before so this should be really cool Some of the tools of wine making the film generation an ancient cave with a key vintage and store. Our old uh, we will go around to the museum and take a break. Maybe later. We bring the legacy. Press the That is my favourite type of rosé. This is such a good thing to do if you're in this area. Really nice people, really nice place, and really nice wine. This is red's delicious. Oh, that's the best one yet. That is so good. This is the wine we do keep in the cake. We just serve it and serve it. Thank you. Traditional boiler. <laughs> 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 
Two, three. Yamas. The last one that we have that showed me saw me shotting is a wine spirit that they collect for when they are fermenting the wine. Very strong. You have to do it in three and then chase it with some. Uh, Turkish delight almost, um, some mm. peanuts. What is it then? Turkish delight. What is it then? Yeah. To manage that, the number one is to have a Finished the wine tasting. Uh, got back in the car because it's very windy outside. But yeah, what a, what a find! Um, five euros for wine tasting. So we got I think seven different wines and a spirit and a dessert wine, bread and olives. Five euros. Highly worth a visit. It's outside Kathgas or Kathiskas, depending on how you say it. Um, 1.5 kilometers down the road. It's still in a winery. You can look around. You don't need to buy anything, do anything, they like look around around the museum as well. Very nice place, very friendly people and if you want to do the wine tasting, it's as I said, it's five euros and it's very nice and well worth doing. What a better way to spend a couple of hours on a cool, cloudy day in Cyprus. I can't think of one. That was really, really good. I would definitely come and do that again and tell everybody to come. It's not too far from Paphos itself. Hire a car. I think you can get the bus. I wouldn't want to be on a bus on some of those roads, but that was well good. Really enjoyed that.